What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a super cool audio effect and I think you're gonna dig it. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out weekly videos helping you guys grow as creators. Today we're gonna be talking about the audio effect and I'm gonna show you how I did it in my recent collab that I just did with Armando not too long ago. In the video, Connor picks up some headphones and the sound changes over that's playing to sound like it's coming out of the headphones itself. I got a lot of messages and requests from people asking for me to teach them how I did this effect. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll go from there. So the first thing you're gonna want is some clips. I just pulled the exact same clips from the recent collab I did, put it in here, put a little bit of different music underneath it, but it will work for the purpose of this tutorial. What I'm gonna do is hit Option and grab this and drag it down and create a duplicate of this timeline audio. I'll explain in a little bit why I'm doing that, but for now, just forget it's there. We're gonna hop inside the Fairlight tab and in here we can start messing with things the first thing I like to do is I like to add a distortion effect on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the distortion right here under the audio effects, Fairlight effects, distortion. If this is not here and you see the media pool, just click on the effects and unclick the media pool and it'll bring it up bigger on the side. We're gonna grab the distortion and instead of dragging it on the clip itself, we're actually gonna drop it on audio timeline one. You can hear there's nothing done to the music right now because we didn't change the preset that it's on. But if we pause that and, and here under the default, if we go down to lo-fi radio and we turn that on and then we play that through, you can see it creates a completely different sound effect and it sounds good by itself right there. That would work completely fine. I like to do things a little bit further though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause it, we're gonna mute this top timeline, we're gonna unmute this one, I'm actually gonna grab this and drag it down to the third timeline, and in this one what we're gonna do is the same thing, nothing's been done to it yet, because all that effects that we put on the first one is just on the first timeline. So we're gonna go over here to the right under the mixer, you can actually grab this and bring it out if you need to, I'm actually gonna go ahead and close that filter right there just so we can kind of see things, keep it a little more tidy, we're gonna to go to the third track and right here where the EQ is, we're gonna double click on that blue line. And I like to grab the fifth one right here and bring it around the 1K mark somewhere here. And I like to grab the second one and bring it, I don't know, right about here. It looks pretty good, let me make sure. play that through, see how that sounds. You can tweak it a little bit more. I'm just trying to create almost a backwards S curve. Now that I like these two, what we're gonna do is hop back inside the edit page and in here, we're gonna mute both tracks. I'm gonna play this video through, find the spot that I think I want it to start changing and we'll go right about there, should be fine. I'm gonna cut this audio right here, play it a little more. Right there should be pretty good and we'll cut it there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unmute it, unmute. I'm gonna grab this one and this one because we're on audio timeline two, which you can reverse these if it gets a little confusing. I normally try to do my audio effects lower. I don't really know why I did it on number one. Um, but the second audio timeline has no effects on it whatsoever. So if we mute the first and the second one and we play it through, it's just the normal audio. It's just the same music, nothing's done to it. So I'm gonna unmute that and what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and bring this one out a little bit, play that through a little longer. Right about there should be good. We're gonna drag that on top. I'm gonna zoom in just a little more so we can see. I'm gonna do a little bit of a fade by grabbing the corners, that little dot, I'm gonna Make sure that kind of is doing a little slope. We're gonna do the same thing with this one, fade it in and kind of just slope it down. You can curve it up if you like. I would mess with it and play with it and see what you prefer. I've done this a few times, so I know this is exactly what I'm wanting to go for. Now, if we play this through by itself, you can hear it's the normal music, and then it's got that kind of radio filter sound to it. But what we did with the other one is having that low pass is we're actually gonna bring it 
and close it up right up underneath this one right here. We're gonna bring the audio way down on it just so it's kind of an undertone of it right there. I'm gonna fade that just a little bit just so it's not too abrupt. We're gonna unmute it. Putting that extra low pass underneath kind of fills it in, but still gives it that audio effect coming out of something smaller, smaller speakers, and that weird kind of distorted sound. This really isn't that complicated of an effect, but it does create a really good impact if you time it right and put it in the correct scenario. I would say don't overdo this and do it too much because then it's gonna kind of start to get weird. And you can tweak with the EQ and the distortion. There's a whole bunch of different ones in there. I like to kind of mix the two just to create it my own to make it a little unique to me and my videos but if you're doing something that's like underwater or a phone I would EQ it just a little bit different I wouldn't have so much bass maybe on that or maybe if you are underwater then I would have maybe way more bass and not so much high-end stuff on it I think it would create a really cool effect and it would be unique to your video there you go guys that's how you do a distorted audio effect inside DaVinci Resolve if you like this video give me a thumbs up it really does help Drop a comment below and some new tutorials you want to see coming out. I would love to hear your thoughts, what you think about this effect. Are you going to use it if you have done it before? Maybe you've done something completely different. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to chit chat with you down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'm out. Peace.